Basically what Fortnite feels like on a Ryzen AM4 system, drops, delay, and a game that just doesn't respond. And most of the time, it's not your graphics card or RAM, it's your BIOS. Today, I'm going to show you exactly what to change in your MSI BIOS to unlock smoother input, more FPS, and consistent performance, especially for Fortnite. Before we do anything, we need to make sure our BIOS is up to date. And MSI has released a whole bunch of updates from 2023 all the way to 2024 for AM4 problems and just stability issues. So here's how to check your BIOS version for your motherboard. All you need to do is press Windows key and R, type msinfo32 and press enter. Then you're gonna look for baseboard product and look at your motherboard model. Now, as you guys can see, my BIOS version is from 2023. So there's probably gonna be a BIOS update I can download and install. So if your BIOS is pretty old and you need to update it, here's how to do it. So open up Google Chrome and all you're gonna do is gonna type the motherboard model that you found at msinfo32 and just type the motherboard model and type support right after it and it's going to bring up the support page on Google. You're just going to click that link, click support on the top right and click BIOS. And as you guys can see, there's a version from 2025, April 30th right here, and you can see what it fixes. So as you guys can see right here, it's fixing anything that's not done properly. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to press download right here. And if you have a USB stick, I will just use that. However, if you don't have a USB stick for whatever reason, and you're just not able to get one, all you're going to do is going to type create. It's going to bring up create and format hard disk partitions. Click that. Then you're going to right click on your drive, click shrink volume. And we're just going to shrink 99 megabytes of space to create a fake USB that's going to act like a USB in order to update our BIOS. As you guys can see, and right click on this allocated space, click new simple volume. Next, next, next. It's file system FAT32. This is the most important step. You need to make sure this is set to FAT32. And volume label. We'll just label this BIOS so we can know that this partition is where we're going to put the BIOS files at. So I'm going to open up where I downloaded the files, right click on it, click extract files, press OK. Then I'm going to double click on it, double click on this, right click, cut, and then go to this PC, BIOS, right click on the blank space, and just press paste. As you guys can see, this is going to be the BIOS files just like so. So this is going to pop up in BIOS. So I'm going to exit out of everything and I'm going to restart my PC and spam delete on the keyboard in order to access BIOS. So once we're in BIOS, all you're going to do to update BIOS is click M flash on the left and press yes. This is going to restart your computer and put the PC in flash mode. So once it's in flash mode, all you're going to do is look through these drives on the left. So most likely it's going to be an FS2 or FS3. So as you can see, it's going to be an FS3 for me. So all you want to do is once you're here, you're going to click this file right here and then just press yes. It's going to start updating your BIOS just like so. And as it says right here, do not let it turn off at all. If it does indeed turn off, it's going to pretty much break your motherboard so make sure this does not get turned off so if this feels risky we do bios updates safely live with you during all of our sessions so once the bios update is done it's going to restart your computer just like normally it's going to boot you right back into windows so all we're going to do is we're going to restart again and spam delete on our keyboard in order to head over to bios so once you guys are back in bios it's going to look somewhat like this all you want to do is click advanced at the top right here we're going to go to oc on the left this is going to be the overclocking menu we're not going to be doing any overclocking in this video we're just going to be setting precision boost overdrive which is kind of like a factory overclock but first things first axmp you want to set this to profile one is always going to be the fastest profile two might be a little bit slower or exactly the same in my case they're both exactly the same so just set it to profile one and you should be good to go uclk div one mode as always uclk equals memclk then go to advanced cpu configuration disable svm mode this is related to virtualization if you need virtualization turned on leave this enabled and next mode disable that pss support disable that spread spectrum disabled then go to amd overclocking and lm2 mode 2 disabled lclk dpm disabled and click on precision boost overdrive set it to advanced pbo limits motherboard precision boost overdrive scaler manual precision boost overdrive scaler set to 2x instead of 1x you can set it a bit higher but basically what this does is if you set it higher it's going to maintain a higher boost clock for a little bit longer than usual this has some weird effects on anything higher so I recommend just setting it to 2x or doing your own testing. Max CPU boost clock override. As always, you can set this to 200 and 
press enter on that to lock that in then smt control i want to cover this real quickly i don't recommend disabling smt control on anything below a ryzen 9 if you're on a ryzen 9 or above you can attempt to disable smt control in order to reduce latency and reduce your temperatures however if you're on a ryzen 7 ryzen 5 or even lower i don't recommend disabling smt control unless you are severely overheating the reason why is because smt control while it's disabled causes weird micro stutters in a lot of games and it doesn't really do anything if your temperatures are already good so highly recommend to just leave it on auto or you could do your own testing at the end of the day but from my experience which is thousands of pcs and five years of experience working on other people's computers auto has been the best choice for the setting for anything under a ryzen 9 then go back go to amd cbs and global c state control as always i recommend disabling this this is a massive latency reduction just by disabling this power supply idle control is set to typical current idle io mmu this is related to virtualization disable it ln2 mode one disabled cppc disabled for both then go back go back one more time scroll down a bit and go to advanced DRAM configuration. And we're gonna click on TRRD underscore S. And for 99% of RAM sticks, you can set this to four. Then the next one right under it, I recommend setting it to eight. You can also set this to four. However, that's gonna be considered overclocking. So I'm just gonna show you guys the safest values that are gonna cause zero issues. So four and eight for both of these and TFAW, I recommend 32. Then scroll down and power down enabled. You wanna disable this TSME disabled bank group swap disabled bank group swap alt set to enabled and dram latency enhance if you have the setting set it to enabled and that's all you have to do on this page now we're going to go back go to motherboard settings on the left go to advanced disable msi driver utility installer then go to pci subsystem settings resize bar support i don't recommend using this for fortnite because it doesn't really do anything it doesn't really affect fps or increase it matter of fact it might even reduce your one percent lows and make your game feel worse so i recommend testing this however for 99 percent of people just disable it unless you're playing other games that benefit from resize bar support for me personally i'm just gonna leave it disabled gen switch if you have this set it to the maximum value so gen 4 or gen 3 chipset gen switch same thing and that's all you have to do here just make sure aspm control for cpu pcie is disabled as well then go back go to integrated peripherals and this is where you can disable anything that's unnecessary and that you don't need so for example if you don't use the audio jacks on your motherboard or on the front of the pc you can just set hd audio controller to disabled then go back go to usb configuration legacy usb support if you're not going to be using a usb stick in the near future to install windows you could disable this then go back go to super io configuration and then serial com port zero configuration and disable serial com port this is a printer port so if you're trying to use a printer you might need to keep this enabled go back go back again then go to amd overclocking press accept go to soc slash uncore oc mode set this to enabled then go back twice and go to windows os configuration and make sure this is set to uvfi if you play games like valorant fortnite and some games that just require secure boot and tpm to be enabled you want to make sure that your uefi mode is set to uefi and you want to make sure that secure boot is set to enabled to avoid any anti-cheat issues then go to settings on the left, go to security and go to trusted computing. Same thing as earlier. You want to make sure security device support is set to enabled because these games like Valorant, Fortnite, they require these two things to be enabled now in order to play competitive multiplayer modes. Now we're going to go back, back again, go back one more time, go to hardware monitor on the right. And guys, this is very important. AMD processors, if they run cooler, they will boost higher, which means if you run cooler, you're going to get more FPS. So ideally for everybody watching this video, I want you to set your fan speeds to the maximum. I know it's going to be a, a bit louder. It's going to sound probably like a jet engine. It's not going to break your computer at all. All this is going to do is going to max out the fan speeds so your CPU stays at a cooler temperature and is able to boost at whatever frequency it needs to boost to in order to provide you with the best performance most of this stuff just adds background delay or voltage filtering turn it off fortnite needs consistency so now we're going to save our profile all you want to do is go to oc profile go to overclock and profile one click set name for overclock and profile one you can name it whatever you want i'm just going to name it zilly press enter then click save overclock and profile one and press yes now we're going to click the x on the top right and as you can see this is everything that we've changed a long list 
of settings and then just press yes now your ryzen am4 system is finally running like it should have out of the box if this video helped but you'd rather not risk anything or you just want it done the right way that's what we do at zilly bios os memory tuning driver stacks all hand tuned live with you on call we're trusted by thousands of gamers and top fortnite pros and if you don't feel a difference we'll give you your money back book your session at zilly.net